God is in his place, church. That's all we ask. Every Sunday, faithfully, every Tuesday, Bible study, faithfully, whatever we do for God, that's all we ask, Lord, is that your presence be in the place. Without you, Father God, what can we do? We honor you, we love you, we appreciate you, Father God. We thank you for being our king. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being our salvation. We thank you for being the one who restores us. We thank you for bringing us in unity with him. Jesus, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Oh, that is so good. You know, it's something about when the presence of God is in the house. You feel comfortable, you feel, you feel protected. Most of all, you feel loved, hallelujah. Praise God. What a morning. I felt the presence of God come in this place and it was just so, so beautiful. And he inhabits the praises of his people. You know, this God we serve, he loves to be loved by his people. There's no problem with God loving us because every day that goes by, he's always blessing us. One hundredfold, he blesses us. Blesses us. We get cornered in something that we decided to do. It's still there. He blesses us over and over and over again. So we are 100% sure that this God will always love us. But I'm here to tell you that this God also needs to be loved too. By his people. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Can we all say good morning to Jesus? Because it's all about him. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of our Lord Jesus, the name that is above every name. And there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. He's the one who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. There is no other God like him. There is no other God but him. I will say that again. There is no other God like him. And there is no other God but him. There you go. Somebody got him. He's excellent. He's marvelous. He's mighty. He's powerful. He's awesome. He's a great and mighty God. And he's so good. And he's so loving that his mercy and his grace endures forever. And ever. And ever. Hallelujah. That's just the God we serve. There is none like him. He stands alone as the only one and only true God. And we call him Jesus. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Woo! Praise him, please. Praise him. We have a God. Church, we have a God. With all these things going on, that's all I came to tell you is we have a God. I'm not going to take too much of you guys. I don't have to. With that praise and worship that we had this morning, he came and he answered. He answered everybody's prayer this morning. And he's a sure God. And he's here right now. The presence of God is in this house right now. And that's all we ask. Like Apostle said, he inhabits the praises of his people. But he inhabits the love of his people too. He inhabits the unity of his people, the oneness of his people he inhabits. We are all in one mind, one accord. He inhabits. Before we even ask or think, he already knows our needs already. Before we even praise and worship him, he already knows our needs and why we're here. I'm saying this because to a lot of people, this God seems so far-fetched. And you guys know what I mean. So far-fetched, he seems so unrealistic to some people and unattainable. Based off reality and the facts that they can't see him nor can they touch him. So they make their conclusion that there is no God. False doctrine. How God lives, guys. I just was talking to him yesterday. I was talking to him last night. And I was talking to him this morning. And he showed up this morning. How God lives. He's alive and he's well. And he is just as real as you and I are sitting here today. You know how I know that? Because you guys hear this God exists. Hallelujah. I know on the um, Apostle Paul and called him, I really was like half sleeping. Apostle Paul, can you put on top, bro? Just put uh, in the beginning, God. But this is what I'm saying has nothing to do with that scripture anymore. That's the first thing that came to my mind that no matter what, what is happening, 
no matter what child tribulation, no matter what obstacle, in the beginning, God! Hallelujah! And that's it. Thank you for guys for coming. Let me just tell you this, and I'm going to speak it really slow, so we all know. The level of our belief in God lies in the level of God's existence in our faith. Apart from the I'm going to say it again. The level of our belief in God lies in the level of God's existence in our faith. So if you get big faith, your God is real big. You know how I know you guys faith big right now? Because you guys here, no matter what the media says, no matter what other people are saying, you guys still here in church. I heard a couple churches shouting down. Why? Let God be God, not man be man. Let God be God. And give the people choice. If they come and serve and, and live for God and praise God in the world, then let them come. Just leave them open. Why close them? Hi, everybody. We're here. We're in the presence of God right now. And I pray that you guys feel His presence come right to that camp. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's what scripture says. Nothing. Nothing. Not death. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. I believe that God is a beginning God and he's an ending God. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of all things. I believe he starts something, if he starts something, when he starts something, and he is going to do something, but he's going to begin it and he's going to finish it. He's not going to leave it halfway like how I do things. I'm not going to tell you guys because we all do it halfway. My wife is still there. Please. Bible says he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the author and he's the finisher of all things. He starts something, he's going to finish it. I am thankful. I don't want God to do a half work on me. I need to be fully finished. That's the only way I can be refined. Is he needs to do a complete work in my life. If he works halfway, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to be able to make it. He is the one that finishes everything that I need in my life. Without him, we have done. If you are here today, God has done many things in your life. And he's going to continue to bless you with many more. I've come to tell you that. That's a promise from the word of God. The word of God that brings life. He's the God that blesses. And when he starts something in your life, he's going to finish it in your life. And then he's going to start something else again in your life. And then he's going to bless you again. This is the God we serve. I've come because I don't like you guys focusing on that coronavirus. You see, everybody, they make the main focus the coronavirus. And that's why they're all hectic. They're all in hysteria and they're all dragged up in fear. They made the focus what they wanted to choose to be the focus. That's not our focus. I don't care what situation is placed before us. God is my focus. He's the main thing. Hallelujah. There's a word that I, God gave me last night, and it's in Isaiah 55, 11. And this word says, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. And check this out, it shall not return void. This is God speaking out in Isaiah. When his word, spoken word, goes forth, he's telling us that not to return void. It's going to do whatever that it's supposed to accomplish according to God. Right? And it's going to prosper wherever God sent it. How's that work? 
So every promise that is written in the word of God, that God has spoken for us, not going to return for it. It's going to accomplish what God said it out to them. Give God praise. We need to know this. Everybody out there needs to know this. We don't serve just on basic God. We serve the God. Hallelujah. He is the only God. He's the jealous God. Nothing stands beside him. He's that jealous. If he says he loves you and you love somebody else more than him, he's jealous. He will like, he will want all of you. He don't want half of you. Because he made you whole, he wants the whole thing. He never make you half of it, or else that's all you can give him is half. He made you whole. Lord wants the whole thing of you, not just half. I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself. Wait, no, I'm talking to you guys actually. Hallelujah. God is so powerful. God speaks his promise. And the word goes forth. And it brings life. And it comes back to God and says, it is done. Your word never returned to you void, God. And then he says, my children, my people, I love you. You do the same thing. Speak to us, say my word. And watch them come back. Not void. So when I say coronavirus, be gone. When I say fear and panic, go and leave. Guess what happened? It doesn't come back void. It just listens to me because I am a son of the living God. And everything that I speak won't come back void. Hallelujah. This God we serve is so, such a big and loving God. Bro, I ought to shake him. <laughs> That's one thing God can help me with. I gotta do my own. Praise God. Everything written in God's word, every promise spoken in God's word shall not be turned away, but shall be accomplished and prosper. Whatever it says. Check this out. And I was just saying it earlier. Romans 8, 37 to 39. King James Version. This is Paul speaking. And it says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. That's a promise. So when we look at each other, Please know that you are conquerors. That's a promise from God because it said that His word shall never go away, shall never come back. Right. Evangelist spoke on them. Apostle Paul spoke before and before that. Pastor Tiana spoke on before and then I spoke on before. Know who you are, guys. It's not you that did it. It's God that blessed you. So if the Bible says you are more than conquerors, that's who you are. Accept it and just leave it be. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Then verse 38 he says, watch this. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels and principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. And that shall never return for you, church. There is nothing that can come against us that God hasn't already looked into yet. When the devil thinks he can just step in and, you know, he can do that to the world. That's why when we look and we see what media and what the world is going through and all the chaos, he can do whatever he wants to in the world. But not in the church of the living God. 
We don't go by his rules. We go by his. So we are being more than conquerors and nothing including the coronavirus shall separate us from the love of God. And these are promises of God that will never return void. It will accomplish in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Check this out. No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. Is that a promise? Yes, it is. God spoke it in his time that this thing cannot come against us. No weapon. No principality. Not even death, God said, can separate us from him. This coronavirus has stirred up a lot of weak emotion and, and uh, the media has made it even worse. Causing panic, chaos, and fearing so much that it is shaking the foundation of many. Do you guys know? You're going to see them in church today. And you're going to see them in other churches today. To me, that's shaking. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend nobody. I just speak in church. You guys know me. Well, uh, I preach to one person, or if I speak to 1,000 people, I got to speak to church. Because what God feels and thinks about me is more important than what everybody else thinks about me. When he made me and ordained me to be a, um, a preacher of his word, um, to speak life to people and to speak truth to people, this is what I rolled up to do. It wasn't my thing. It was God's thing. And if I've done something wrong, I'm sorry. See God. What does that say? Pray to. Pray to. Pray to. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll say that again. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Again, I would say Romans chapter 8, verse 18. King James Version. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, everybody heal me in Jesus' name, in this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's our God. That is our God. There is a peace that passes all understanding that we can find an experience in God no matter what is the situation that we're going through. No matter what is thrown at, I should say, mankind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Talks about that peace that passes all understanding. This peace lies in the hands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That He has everything in control. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And need and lean not unto your understanding, but in all his trust, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We gotta trust in his God, guys. The bumping and the shaking hands, I just be honest, no work for me. I've been hugging people from the day I was born all the way through my whole life. The only reason why I never do it to you guys is because you guys. I never like offend you guys. But the stuff will stop me from hugging nobody. I love you guys that much. I don't care about this coronavirus. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist at all. Because according to my God, this stuff is nothing on us. We gotta start preaching truth and believing truth. Who knows? Maybe the love of Christ that is in me when I hug the person, if they get it, it is God and it shall be submitted in Jesus' name. I don't know. I don't know all things about God, but I know that He can do all things. Amen. Check this out. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. This is my go-to scripture. Every time when, whether it be demonic or demonic 
infliction, inflicted or, or spiritual or physical, infli or just, just my fault. This is my golden scripture. Yes, and it's found in, and not negating the cross, that our Lord got up on the cross and died for us, that we can have eternal life. I don't negate nothing. But this is my go-to scripture. And it's in the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. It says, to everything, not just one thing, now. not just one. Watch that. This is King James Version. It says, to everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. This is my peace and comfort golden scripture. You know what? You know your bank account is empty? It's only season. You know your marriage situation that it seems like it's gonna break down and it's gonna it's gonna demolish it. You know your marriage? It's only a season. That's my go to scripture. You know this coronavirus? It's only a season. Give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. That's how powerful God's promises are. When God says and he calls something seasonal, it means it's going to happen. And, and then by the grace of God's hand, it's gone. To everything there is a season, a time. To every purpose under heaven. This is, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord for your loving mercies and your grace. This scripture is a promise from God that no matter what difficulty, difficulties, trials, or storms we may be facing. That we may be facing in our lives, including, again, I hate that word, carbon 19. It's just seasonal. It's only temporal. According to God's word, it's not permanent. You see the power there is in, in seasons? You have winter. And then you know summer's gonna come. Winter don't last forever, it's, it's temporary. And every situation in our life is the same thing. We're supposed to give God glory. Now. That no matter what other situation you're going through, it's not a season. No. It's temporary. Nothing is permanent. There is one thing I know. And I promise you, I hit this on, and I will bet on this. There's only one thing that is permanent. God. Let's give God praise in this place. That's the only permanent thing in God. Hallelujah. And you know what? I call him dad. That's my father. Everything you see, you see me with that came from him. There's only one that is permanent and that's God. Crisis, pandemics, epidemics. We've heard them all. God chose mankind. That's why in the beginning, he created man. To today, he still takes care of man. No matter what epidemic has come through mankind, we still live. Because God has a special love upon mankind. Everything died. But we're still moving on until our Christ comes back to take us away. All his promises in the word of God from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, it's happening. And there's nothing, nobody, no spirit, no devil can do about it. So mankind can make all these crazy things up and just toss them to mankind for whatever reason, for, for uh, destroying mankind intentionally or not. As long as our God lived, we live. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's another promise that I need to tell you. That our Lord God will never put on us more than we can bear. I'm so thankful for that. 
Sometimes I come right on the edge. And then when that scripture pops off, I just cry and I love God. I tell God, you know what, thank you. So I was about reaching a point where I just like walk away. I just couldn't bear it. He said, was it for you to bear anyway? I don't want to call this the process give to me. But sometimes we're hot headed in our humanity, we're hard headed. And that's what happens. We seem to think that we can bear the cross. That was never for us to bear. Never. Everybody say amen. amen. So if you're wondering why that um, that scripture that I had Apostle Post on our inspire, in the beginning God. It's because that's the way I feel. That no matter how good we are doing or what situations comes at us, storms, whatever it may be, in the beginning, God. And the Lord was telling me that, you know, I'll speak, you know, pray, you know. And he just placed some burden on my heart that uh, it was like the way I felt in, internally, spiritually, I was like, yeah, Lord, I love you. I love you more than you know, which he knows all things. But I felt myself, myself yearning to love God more. Like I need to prove to God that, Lord, I do. I do love you. But I never can be perfect. You made it that way. But with everything that's within me, Lord, I don't love you. It was like the Lord wanted to be appreciated and loved. So that's why he gave me this in the beginning thing. Because I need to tell you. People think, um, you know, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So if we look at the Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we find out the creation of God. And this is the way, because I fell in love with God because of Gen Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And I've explained to Apostle Paul and many of you, to me, that these two chapters, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, is the love chapter. And when God said, remind my people that I need to be loved too, this is the first thing I came because that's why I fall in love with God was because of Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Again, I'm not negating the cross. We're just in Old Testament and I just never reached, at the time I, I didn't reach, um, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, it explains the creation, that God created everything in six days. And on the seventh day, if you guys read, now you guys can read your Bible. I don't like going through every, every single one. I've done this like a thousand times. From day one to day six, he created everything. Day seven, he rested. And the Bible says, he said that everything was perfect. The Bible says man was created on the sixth day. Then after that, when you come into chapter 2, that's God shows how he created man. From earth, blew life into man. Okay? So the sixth day he created man, beasts, and all man. This is how much God loves us. In order for man for exist, on the sixth day, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, had the first you made. If it was anyway besides day one, two, three, four, and five, it wouldn't work. Everything had to be precisely made from day one, light, day two, separation, heaven and waters, day three, earth coming out of the water, grass, everything, all place, fuck this, fuck this, sun, moon, or was that a fit? But what I'm saying is, everything had to be exactly created in order for us to exist on this earth. To me, that's love. Because he did all this just for us. That's big time love. He could have created any being, but he chose mankind that came in the image of himself. But before that happened, man happened to be created. Everything had to be placed in divine order. 
and I've said this before, if the sun was a fraction farther, we would freeze. And if the sun was a fraction closer, we would die from burning. This is how much this God loves us. He's got our back. He created space, time, Apostle and myself has said this many times. Space, time, gravity, he put all this in so perfect order that I'm standing here today preaching before you. So if this is true that this God loves us so much that he did all this that surround us for us to exist here today, he deserves to be glorified and honored. Without a shadow of a doubt, he deserves to be magnified. He deserves to be lifted up high about the heaven and earth that he created. I just try to put in you guys' heart how much this God loves us. He didn't have to. The cross is one other part of the how much he loves us. I'm talking about Old Testament. That his love was already for us before the New Testament, Testament even came along. <clears throat> Lord, we love you so much. You deserve it, Lord. Everything that's within us, Father God, you deserve it. You deserve it. This God was self, in the beginning, God, this God was self-existing. He was self-sufficient. Meaning he never need nothing, he never need nobody, he was sufficient. He was self-existing, meaning he existed before everything. This mighty, powerful God. And when he was taking me back to all these in the beginning things, it gave me so, I was so gratified, I was so satisfied in me, I was so comforted. Because my whole focus was on this God who loves me for who I am. And not the coronavirus. This coronavirus is nothing for our God. Nothing. Nothing. It's our job for be careful and for be safe and the things we do, if we like take precaution, that's your prerogative. That's fine. But we love and we respect each other. But no 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 um, no deny our God the love that he deserves. As soon as we think that the coronavirus is bigger than our God. And that's what it is. That's your faith. But I've come to uplift your faith. I've come to show you how awesome our God is. I, I, come, I come to tell you that our God needs to be loved. Because he loves us and he does everything for us. And he deserves everything back. I've come to tell you that no weapon form against us shall ever prosper. I can tell you that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I can tell you many promises in the Bible. And all these things shall never return void. Let's give God praise in this place. Hallelujah.